Hello YouTube modelers. I probably should have done this video before my 2022 resolution video, but I still want to close out 2021 by bringing you up to speed on my Pearl Harbor 80th group build entry, the Lady Lindy, as well as a final 2021 mail call, as well as uh, an unboxing of my 1-72 photo etch bicycles, and a final stash haul. And hopefully do all that in 15 to 20 minutes. So here goes. So one thing I did notice on this kit, there are no alignment uh, pins and holes. So it's, it's pretty much, you know, getting it aligned as perfectly as possible and then gluing it together. I think once I get the cockpit pieces in there and, and so on, um, it's gonna help everything align up. Next, I'm going to put the uh, windows in all except for the one that goes in the door and the one that goes in the actual window on the other side. After the interior is complete, so to speak, and, and, and painted, then I'll put that window in there. W one tricky thing about this kit, I, I wanna bring your attention to it. All of these windows are the same angle. Um, in other words, if you, if you look down the side of it, you're not gonna see one window like that and the next one like that. They're all as if, you know, flat one single panel. And that took a little bit of work. What I did was sand all four edges so it would go deeper in there and then kind of forced it and just played with it with my thumb, my fingernails and a toothpick to try to get those at the right angle. I'm real super happy with the way this one came out. This one, I think one of them is off. Now the next step is to kind of build out the cockpit and then all of that gets sprayed gray. And then before I put all this together, the last thing I'll do is, is put a window in each of those. As I suspected, you know, as long as you get these pieces perpendicular, um, that you're adding in there, um, and I repeatedly test fit this when I was doing this, you know, the lack of attachment pins and, and uh, receivers uh, is inconsequential. The last piece to prepare is this tail, for which I used my razor saw to remove it from its base, leaving just a small tab, which I then sanded down. And those new ultimate uh, sanding cards are perfect for this purpose to get it right down to a nice consistent smooth surface. Here's the light gray and the neutral gray. And then I used gloss black on the engine pistons and the instrument panel, aluminum on the wheels and joystick, and then brown uh, for the leather on the seat. I put the uh, clear parts, the final two clear parts, in the fuselage. Next, I'm going to address the cockpit uh, instrumentation. So I'm going to be working from this. I just picked like three or four colors. I think a, a gray, a white, uh, a yellow, and uh, a red inside those dials. And then dry brushed uh, with the steel to get those outer rims. Then on the engine, did that with the black panel line wash, wiped that down, then did it with the gray panel line wash in, in those cylinders to kind of bring out those ridges, then dried that down and also dried brushed that with the steel. On the seat, I uh, did the black panel line wash in the uh, folds of the back. I hit this with the pledge and now I'm going to go in and um, panel line wash and, and maybe dry brush a few things in there. Here's the completed interior. That's the instrument panel. Use panel line wash on the tanks. The seat hit that with dull coat just to bring it down a little bit. It's supposed to be leather so I think that looks kind of close to leather. And then I just built these. I'm test fitting this um, cockpit piece and it fits really nice. Ready to do the cockpit masking. Then I worked on that bottom seam uh, and attached those blisters that hold the landing gear struts. Then I attached the main wing with uh, the Tamiya Thin Super Glue all the way around. Then I addressed the rear wings, starting with one side, making sure it's perpendicular, then going to the other side, same thing, double checking perpendicular. On this reference photo, you can clearly see that there's holes in that cowling where the uh, exhaust come out. So I'm going to drill those out. 
So here again is another example of incorrect instructions. So here it shows this piece A9 going down onto the shaft of A21. What the bottom of A9 actually does, here it is here, and it goes to the top of that piece. It does not ever even touch the other two. Uh, so I drilled a hole. That should go like that. I've never done one of these. Uh, I, I guess this whole structure here is called a monocoque. I just learned that. I had to look it up because they mentioned it in the instructions that Lockheed, this was his main contribution to speed, is he came up with um, this monocoque or, or landing gear system, which was the most aerodynamic at the time. It's extremely thin and slender and, uh, and aerodynamic. Man, was that a pain. Um, to get those three pieces to come together and to get those to to line up, which I hope they do. Yeah, that was not fun. It took me easily three or four tries on each side. There are these gaps uh, underneath there on each side um, where the wing meets the cockpit. And there's the tail. I tacked that on with the Tamiya Thin Cement that enabled me to play with it a little bit and smush it together. And then I just touched it right at that front connection point with the ultra thin super glue and let capillary action take it down that seam. You can see those undersides, uh, those holes on either side filled in and sanded down. I just finished using the spastics on this propeller. This is uh, the Model Master uh, white primer. So another challenge of painting, especially planes, is how do you hold it? And then how do you set it up to dry without anything touching, so on and so forth. Oftentimes, especially when the landing gear is, you know, goes into the plane and is recessed, I've used coat hanger wire with however many prongs I've twisted it to go into the recessed landing gear and you hold it that way. Now this one, <laughs> no. So I found an opening I can exploit. So I put a sticky tack on a dowel rod that just fits in there. And um, I'm gonna shove this in there because I can hand paint this. It's gonna be underneath the cowl. So I don't really care. That's actually supposed to stay gray. Mail call. First, I want to start with a shop card I received from, actually, shop cards, plural, um, from NYS Modeling, uh, Dylan over at NYS Modeling. And he's got a Happy Holidays card, which is very cool. Some kind words on the back. And then two different shop cards with a couple of his awesome builds on it. Thank you very much, Dylan. Those are going to go up on the wall. I think this next, my wife's hairdresser, whose name is also John. You know, I'm sure my wife told him I do modeling. And I guess he was cleaning out his house and he came across this and, and he passed it along to me. I've already uh, scoured this. Um, and uh, so there's a couple of techniques in there that I'm, uh, I'm going to apply going forward. Um, so that was cool. And then uh, last but not least, I received Dauntless Hobbies. These are the 1 to 72 bicycle. Then I'm going to try to use the wheels for that um, tow bar or whatever that is. And the new shop cards are on the wall right over there. Again, thanks, Dylan. So the shop card collection is growing. So the plane is now primed. And the next step is the red paint. Here's the, the plane painted. I'm gonna wait till it fully dries, but I'm still seeing kind of like streaks there. Um, so it may require uh, a second coat after it completely dries. You know, it's looking pretty good. And I think that color is, you know, a pretty close match. And then there's the cowl. I think it's because I had too narrow a uh, needle 
Um, and so I'm going to go with the biggest uh, needle. Yeah, I think that works much better. I don't know if you can out in a regular light. It's just, it's not as streaky. And I touched up those wheels. I made new exhausts. I, I didn't like the one on the right. Uh, the gray one is the kit part. And after test fitting it in uh, those holes on the cowl, I didn't think it looked close enough to references. So uh, I went with some styrene rod, used my uh, razor saw and, and razor saw miter box and made those two new ones. Cut them off at a 45 degree angle and then use the pin vise um, to, to drill them out. And there's those exhausts with the uh, gun metal on them. While the plane dries in the vise over at the workbench, I'm going to um, work on this structure. And it seems like, you know, it's, it's for moving the plane around because that in the back there is not a tire, it's a stand. And when that's on the ground, those rear the rear uh, wings probably drag on the ground especially when the flap is folded like that on mine it's straight and it's barely touching the ground so um, i'm sure they made this to help move the plane around as well as you know get that tail up off the ground i have this uh one to 72 bicycle it's actually two bicycles uh, so I'm gonna use the wheels and it looks like it has a fender on there. I'm not gonna freak out about that. Um, and then I have my various size uh, Plastruck uh, square rod. And I think there's actually, excuse me, some flat rod there as well. And then I think I just need my um, uh, panel bits spares box. I can you know, probably find some stuff in there. And so I'm gonna let the creative juices flow and try to recreate as best I can that structure. I think I'll also do an unboxing of of these just because it's I didn't even know such a thing existed. Uh, I searched and searched and then put out the video asking and Charlie Mack's like they're out there and so I kept looking and sure enough I found them. Um, so with that it's something semi-unique so let's take a look. This is Bren Gun. 1 to 72 BRL 7204 bicycle 1 to 72. They call it model accessories. So there you go, it's an accessory. Uh, pretty straightforward directions where you bend it. Speaking of which, another tool that's very useful if you're going to do photo etch, a bender. Um, so basically what this is, it's kind of like a press and it has these two knobs and these two holes and you can kind of set it wherever you want and then uh, tighten it down. Um, so typically what you do, uh, once you have your piece in there and you have it lined up exactly where you want that fold to be, right? So then it's, um, it's laying on there, you use the razor to get underneath there, get it right up to that bend so it's even, and then bend it up. And then you have your bend exactly where you want it. And then you open this up and pull it out. That's how this works. Um, and it has all kinds of different curves and angles um, so that, because sometimes you want to fold it all the way past um, 90. Um, so it has these uh, bevels and, and whatnot. And then it has, uh, on this side, a nice um, long straight edge. So if you do have a big piece like this, you can fold the entire thing. And they sell these even bigger. Um, I got it from, I believe it's called the smallshop.com. I'll look it up and put it in the notes. But if you're going to do photo etch, you got to have one of these. <clears throat> um, so anyway, that's the... Uh, the unboxing of that. I'll have a whole other bicycle left. I may actually just build the bicycle. It's, it's kind of cool. So this is yet again another Ace Hardware, one suburb over the other way from the last one you saw. Look at that. This one on the end cap. They have their uh, testers. And then over there, you can see uh, uh, those are the acrylics and these are the enamels. So again, I picked through there, uh, this Ace Hardware's Model Masters, and uh, got these. There's a Chrysler Engine Blue, 
um, old engine blue. Um, and what's the, oh, Pontiac engine blue. So I grabbed those. And then, you know, a few things here and there. Um, Sack Bomber Tan. I believe I have a B-52 uh, that requires that. So anyway, yeah, just sad to see Tester's Model Master go, but what are you gonna do? Is that a sign? Testers for every surface, testers creative zone. If I had room in my workshop, I would get that and hang that, but I don't. That's pretty friggin' cool. So a few days later at my home Ace Hardware, I have these re Ace Rewards cards that are burning a hole in my wallet and uh, it's after Christmas. So I don't feel like I'm denying anyone of a present but I'm gonna use one of these cards. It's uh, $10 off regular purchases of $50 or more, um, which is like 20% off. I just checked and it's uh, $50 total in merchandise so I can combine kits if I want. And I also had a $5 anytime coupon that was applicable as well. I don't have any motorcycles in the stash. This thing looks kind of cool. Huh. It's like 30 bucks. Let me think about that. Hmm. 30 bucks. Cartoon build, maybe? Yep, that's the one. So that is the kit that I built as a kid, because I remember those taillights. I am going to get that. Yeah, I think this is going to do it. So we've got that and that. So here's my Ace Hardware Hobby Shop haul. Um, so I got the 66 Pontiac GTO um, because, and this is a kit I built as a kid because I remember those taillights. Um, and I just got some uh, Pontiac blue engine color. And then I got the 68 Vidal. <laughs> Believe it or not, my uncle used to pack his family in this when, when we were kids. He had one. I don't know if it was a 68. It might have been a little later. Uh, but he packed the family in there. That was the family car. So I finally got one of these. I'm going to build that. All right. I think this is a good break point. So this is over here in the vise drying. And the rest of the sub-assemblies are uh, all painted and waiting final assembly and decals. And then I think while that's drying, I'm going to work on that bicycle and try to make that thing. So that's where I'm at. So as always, thanks for watching. Happy modeling and happy new year.